people are often curious about how rockets move in space and there's nothing or at least virtually nothing for them to push off against. This is a fairly common and to quite some extent understandable misconception about how rockets actually move. Now, anyone who's seen footage of a rocket blasting away from the launch pad, the flames which splay out across the base of the launch pad can quite easily be forgiven for understanding the power of the lift was due to the rocket pushing against the solid immovable pad and therefore being propelled in the other direction. But this just isn't the case. If something like this were needed then objects such as jet aircraft, indeed air-to-air -air missiles, just wouldn't be able to operate. So that leaves us with a question, what actually is going on in the rocket and why do they need a launch pad at all? Well, taking the last part first, launch pad is there to provide a stable platform for the mass of the rocket and the gantry. Just supporting the weight of those structures really needs something substantial, but also it takes the rocket a short time to build up the full power required for the lift off. In that time, the rocket needs something that will hold it in place for long enough until the thrust from the rocket can support its own mass and clear the pad. Without a solid, stable pad, the rocket would just likely be toppled over to one side or the other, which would be disastrous, especially for anybody nearby. The physics of the rocket itself, we have to look at something called conservation of momentum, which stems from Isaac Newton's third law of motion. The basis of this law is that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. It's going to be seen when a gun is fired. A bullet emerges from one end, traveling very fast, but at the same time, the gun also kicks back or recoils fairly slowly in the opposite direction, at least slowly in comparison with the speed of the bullet. When the gun is fired, both the ammunition and the gun itself are stationary. They have no momentum. After the gun is fired, the bullet is moving forwards and the gun is moving backwards. The conservation of momentum means that when you add up these forces, take into account they're acting in opposite directions, they should act, add up to zero or the original resting state. So if the gun may weigh about a hundred times more than the bullet it fires, and since force equals mass times velocity, the bullet will need to travel a hundred times for faster forwards than the gun recoils backwards. However, the total force of the bullet moving forwards and the gun moving backwards will both be equal, just acting in opposite directions. So now, all we have to do is apply this same method to the rocket. Obviously, like the gun in the example, at the start, the rocket is stationary. As it lifts off, however, a large proportion of the fuel is shot out one end. The greater the mass of this fuel that's expelled downwards from the rocket, and more importantly, the faster it goes, the greater the force we produce pushing the, the rocket upwards. This is again because the two forces need to balance out to maintain the original momentum of the rocket. So even though the rocket is a very heavy object, because so much fuel is being expelled so fast from the rocket, it accelerates very fast away from the Earth. In fact, if nothing else would happen, it would very quickly get into space. But the rocket also has to overcome the pull of gravity, bringing it back down. Because of this requirement, the rocket needs to have more fuel. But it runs into a serious problem here. The more fuel the rocket has at the start, the heavier it becomes, and therefore the more fuel that's needed to move the rocket off the launch pad in the first place. Which is why rockets taking things into orbit or beyond are so massive. Now once the rocket is in space, away from the Earth and away from its gravity, all that is left is just a relatively light module or capsule. Gravity is no longer an issue, so relatively small amount of fuel is used as thrust will provide quite a dramatic change in velocity. But the conservation of momentum still can be a serious issue. And in order to get to a distant object like Mars in a reasonable amount of time, the rocket needs to build up a significant amount of speed or momentum. But this means as it approaches Mars, unless the thrust is applied in the opposite direction, we we'll still have that momentum as it either flies past or smashes into the planet's surface. This is the reason why Mars rovers 
to take such extraordinary measures to reduce their speed to avoid such a damaging impact. So that's momentum and why rockets in space don't need something to push off from. It's all about the conservation of momentum.